everybody and welcome to a brand new live session. I don't know why I have one particular string out. Maybe I should get the other string out. <laughs> it makes it look like a super fancy hoodie. How are we all doing? Thank you so much for being here. So this is a continuation of the live session series that I started, um, that whenever I started it, sort of trying to show up during the lockdown situation. But I think I mentioned last week that we have had the news here in the UK that basically uh, we have freedom on the horizon, which is very exciting um, in the sense that, you know, we've been given dates uh, to, to be able to get outside and to do all sorts of different things, whether or not they happen or not, that's a different question. And I felt like perhaps this is time then to, to mix up what we're doing here a little bit. So most of the 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 first live sessions I were doing were kind of like pure entertainment factor. Then eventually I like drew it in a full circle and, and started getting my act together and was like, you know what, let's talk about specific things here. So we touched on um <clears throat> we touched on sort of hiking and camping kit, camera kit, and then I was like, all right, that's a wrap. <laughs> so today I'm I always want to be like, yeah, I'm going to talk a lot, but of course I'm going to talk a lot. It's a live session. <laughs> First of all, I would like to maintain the the little check in, so I can see numbers are very slowly going up. People are are joining. We have decided just because it's a new series, I wanted to move where I was going to be doing these live sessions um, at outside because it's it's sort of light, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Um, and it's been really sad weather today. So instead we decided to make a jungle. So welcome to the jungle. Rather than candles this time we have got plants. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. Hey, and plants are going to feature a bit in the conversation. Um, so it is going to be a bit sort of strategy heavy today. Um, but what I would really appreciate on the side is Anybody who has any questions, first of all, to leave it in capital letters, and then I'll be able to read it a little bit easier. Um, I generally try not to follow the feed because I find it the feed <laughs> and my head and, you know, trying to keep on track is quite challenging. So I'm going to work on that. And I would appreciate questions, certainly in terms of um, not just today's conversation, because I have a bit of a direction for today, but future conversations, questions and things you'd like me to dive into a little bit. And I can sort of see where they, they, they can come in. So as always, what I was getting to there, it would be really nice if you could on the side say um, one to 10 where you're at. 10 is you're on top of the world and one is really just not feeling it. I can see somebody is a zero and that is so sad. Um, there's a lot of low numbers today. Um, I always say that I hope this live session at least lifts at a number or two. I'll do my best. Uh, but the fact that you are here is... Is amazing, you know. It's it's certainly easier to um, to show up for ourselves and for others when we're feeling good. But the times when it's certainly most powerful and important is when perhaps we're not feeling so good. Um, you know, it's much easier to give when we're feeling good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you for being here, and hopefully this will this will help um, a few folks. Oh, we've got ten there as well, looking good. Real mix of numbers, hey? Um, Ian, I wanted to ask how your move went. I'll be in touch. <laughs> so I know that everybody is up and down. I think everybody is up and down every day, to be honest. And I wanted to, I'm going to try my best to sort of keep this in some kind of flow. I, I want to start with how are we feeling? And I think just taking a moment to address, like, how am I doing? Like in general, how am I doing? And you know, I'm all right. I'm okay. Like, what what is your like normal range from one to ten where you sort of sit in? Because it's a nice way to sort of be able to um, to look at how how you're doing in general. And I'm not just for yourself, but I think what I want to just say, everything we're going to touch on today is equally as applicable if you're living with somebody who is or just somebody <laughs> who is somebody um, because you know we all have our we have our um you know ups and downs and, and keeping an eye on each other is really important so I wanted to start by sort of telling a little bit of my story um it's probably going to come out as a bit of a rant but I really don't mean it that way I hope you can hear it from the purest heart <laughs> but you know COVID has been tricky and we've mentioned a few times through various videos it's not been the primary pressure distressor whatever to be honest this year um 
or the last year, the last 12 months. There's been all sorts of different things. If you've watched the channel, you know what different things have happened, um, like massive life shifts, massive life change. Also, can we just have a moment? Where is Dave? Is Dave here? Hello? <laughs> um, we, we need to chase Dave. Somebody, somebody get Dave here. <laughs> Um, also when Dave comes, if Dave comes, everybody has to shout hi Dave on the side. Okay. All right. Dave's my dad. For those of you who are interested, he tunes in on the side, which is always, it's just nice, you know, have that, that bit of support anyway. Um, so yeah, so COVID obviously has been tricky. It's been very hard, um, <laughs> you're shouting with, you know, under normal circumstances, I would take a year and I'll be like, this is what's happening. And I would execute that plan um however easy it is or not like it's not easy <laughs> so last year I had all my plans in place and obviously they went out the window just like everybody else there's no pity here it's just that's the fact um amazingly you know especially thanks to Anna I was able to use the year in in a very good way um was able to do all sorts of things that never really crossed my mind they weren't top of the list but I was still really pleased to do them uh but that desire to achieve those sort of heartfelt heart driven goals is still there because they're untouched and they've had a lot of attention but very little action and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling the same now with regard that's sort of me on my personal side then with regards to the business side and I know some people are going to be conflicted and I please just say before you conflict me <laughs> um do the research but technically with running my business I could still travel I could still do everything like normal because I can't do it from home it's just out of respect to others and to myself, I have chosen to obviously stay local, as has been advised, um, you know, and, and focusing on just getting 2020 videos edited. I just finished the Zugspitz um, this morning, which is Germany's highest mountain. That'll go out at the beginning of the beginning or end of April, March, something like that. Um, so it's nice to have that sort of scheduled in. Um, and I'm working to a very strict sort of deadline basis, goal orient. I'm, I'm, I work very well when I'm goal orientated. Um, and, you know, so by the end of March, this, this, this has to be done by the end of April, this, this, this has to be done. And then hopefully by the end of April, 2020 will be behind us. <laughs> and uh, I can sort of move into 2021 and just crack on with that without the pressures of 2020 stuff needing attention. I'm also brainstorming all sorts of different ideas that I can film here, such as, for example, that wild camping video I put out two weeks ago, this week's video, which is um, what was this week's video? Oh, uh, overnight packing stuff. Um, I've, you know, I'm shooting videos on, on how to overcome like hiking anxieties of, of, of hiking alone, certainly as a female, um, you know, different like cheap budget camping kit. And then it's going to be a giveaway. We're going to be doing like how to be vegan on the trail, different backpacking snacks, yada, 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 all sorts of different things. So I'm blessed in the fact that I'm a very creative person and I can use this time to create new content, to get outside, shoot that stuff locally and bring it to you um it's just been very tricky at times and I think I haven't I've sort of tried to voice it but Anna very helpfully was able to sort of put it into words earlier today um that like I have a normal situation like everybody else not only am I just trying to get through lockdown but I'm also trying to keep a business going again very familiar to other people but then I also have that public figure pressure and it sort of feels like no matter what you do people are not gonna like it and it's kind of tricky so I mentioned you know for, for example when we went traveling in um in the summer we were absolutely entitled to do that we were legally within our rights we, we broke no rules and if we did we wouldn't have been allowed out or in of the country and yet a lot of people had a lot of bad things to say about that um everything we did was exceptionally cautious and uh it was just a shame but then obviously when i didn't put videos out and we started um the abby and anna show you know and, and different things like that and then i'm not putting out as many hiking videos because I'm actually burnt out and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's people like, where are the hiking films? Go back to hiking. It's like, well, hello, have you have you looked at the state of the world? <laughs> so again, I said this would come out as a rant and I don't mean it like that. But it's just been tricky because I've been very stuck in the middle. And I think sometimes I feel like as adults, or certainly as we grow older, we spend our lives trying to unpick the stories that were put in our heads as children, whoever it's by, friends, peers, families, whatever. And, you know, I have been through various mediums, <laughs> been told that I can't commit to anything, that I don't show up very well for other people, for myself, that I always bail and abandon. Um, and that I, 
what was the other thing I was going to say? Great, it happened again. <laughs> Trail of thought. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, whatever. It's just, it's been tricky. And, you know, then then coming with wild and sort of trying to pull it, that was it, that I'm I'm very stuck in my ways. And that's because I have my routines. I have my things I do that keep me afloat, that help me manage my mental health. And to the outside world, that can seem very narrow. But the truth is, it is adaptive. Just because I walk the same morning walk every morning and because I don't go and do another walk, even though I kind of want to, doesn't mean I'm not able to adapt. And I struggle with the concept of change, just like everybody. But I'm I'm very good at adapting because I'm very creative. And certainly when I'm surrounded by the right people, when that uncertainty or that... Um, uh, what's the word where you can't decide something <laughs> indecision there you go comes up then I being able to bounce that around by people who know me who don't even tell me what to do but they question me they challenge me they quiz me that can steer me and keep me going and it's it's proved it's proved so powerful over the years that sort of no matter what situation I find myself in whether I'm having a seething standing stay day with my mental health I'm struggling to get training whether I'm overwhelmed with work whether people aren't liking what I'm what I'm doing like I'm able to still just get back into that creative mind and be like well what what feels right what feels like the next step and I've touched on that in a few different things and I think this is a really nice opportunity to sort of steer the conversation into what we can all do moving into 2021. <clears throat> so having these dates here in the UK, for, for those of you who are listening in, internationally, um, <clears throat> you know, I, no, we, <laughs> I, we, one, have been told, hopefully, best case scenario, 12th of April, we can do X, something or other of May, we can do Y. And as much as that is like, woo, we can do the things, it's also, I can't tell you how many people it's crushed. And again, I've touched on it in various sessions pr prior to this. Um, prior is the right word, isn't it? I always get prior, previous, confused. This is not my like best hour, I have to say. Um, 4th of July last year, it, it, the same thing happened. You know, we, we're told we can go out, especially, you know, in terms of the camping, we're allowed to pitch up tents, yada, yada, back to normal. And it's, it's exciting, but it's also like, where do you start? The trails are going to be busy. Campsites are full. Roads are jam blocked. I don't want to be wild camping next to 10 other people wild camping because that's not wild camping and yada, yada, yada. Um, it's intense. And I feel like the same thing is happening now. I mentioned last session that there was a 500% increase in um, international bookings within an hour of the announcement being made. Like, sheesh. <laughs> First of all, I'm like, cool, go international because then the trails here are going to be quiet. But also like, what are we doing? Like, where have the learnings gone from this year? Like, I completely understand the whole, well, we've just made it through the toughest year on record and we deserve a holiday but that's like saying well I've just run a marathon so now I'm going to eat a whole carrot cake or I've just gone for a run or a cycle marathon's not the best analogy and I'm going to eat x like you can reward yourself with something but is it actually the right thing for the future progression for mental health for physical well-being and for the planet as a whole and I think I sort of set the challenge last week of writing down the main things you've learned from lockdown that you want to take into your your future life and I don't I, I'm not saying any of this in a judgmental way like everybody's entitled to do what they want to do but what I'm trying to to get to is just because everybody else is going out saying we have to do all of this all of that this year because we've missed a year and we've got to catch up it's like you don't you don't have to do that <laughs> like most of us have been able to see the beauty that's around us. We're moving into spring now and we're going to come on to that later. I think most of us in the UK have had some sunshine this week and it has felt glorious. And yes, having things to look forward to is really exciting, but just take a step back from it. We don't have to feel that pressure to book up campsites. We don't have to feel that pressure to meticulously plan everything. And yes, okay, maybe we do because the campsites are booking up, but we don't because whatever is going to happen, if we go in with it with the right attitude, it's going to be good. It's going to be it's going to be different, but it's going to be good. And <clears throat> basically, I want to just be that person. <laughs> if you can't be it for yourself, to give yourself permission to just let go a little bit, to just take a deep breath and be like, it's OK, because I think a lot of people's initial reactions, certainly people who have become more anxious and felt more stressed over the lockdown period is just is more stress and more anxiety as a result of of being told that we can get out. It's not been the liberating success that I think we all thought it would be. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> and this is where 
we have to go inwards and we have to go, what are my values? What are the things I'm taking away from this, this time? And actually, how can I continue to see the beauty around me and not get caught up in this jet stream, as we called it last time, of pressure that everybody is putting on us simply by doing their thing? Hike your own hike, you know, just like the run your own race. This is your journey. And if you want to go and walk the West Highland away because that's personal to you, do it, but do it on your terms. And if you're being cornered into, I have to make this adaption and that adaption in order to make it happen, maybe it's not the right time. I can give you an example. The Kungsleden is a trail through Sweden that I've, I've always wanted to do for years and years. I was going to do it a couple of years ago. Um, didn't. Going to do it last year. Obviously couldn't. And, you know, potentially I could go and do it this year. I don't know. I could put it in the diary maybe. I can make some inquiries. I'm letting it go because I also know that the likelihood of me being on the trail this year and having an authentic Kungsleden experience is very slim, is very narrow, and I don't want that. So I feel the pressure to get that trail done because I want to, I'm excited by it. But actually I'm doing myself more of a service by just saying, do you know what? I'm gonna come back to that in a little bit of time. And if this year just ends up being day hikes here, there and everywhere, and maybe I do more writing, or maybe I actually just see friends more, and maybe I spend some time with Bobby because he's cute and getting on a little bit. You know, it's 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 that's equally as important, it's equally as valuable just by being here you know, you're contributing just by looking inwards, you're living true to you. And uh, I think that's just sort of the, the letting go I wanted to do. If you are unsure on the, of what you want to do this year, you know, I definitely recommend books are great. The internet is good, but it's so easy to get caught up on going down a tangent that you didn't mean to go down. And that's where I think books is great. And so next week, I'm actually just going to bring in a whole load of different guidebooks and stuff and talk about some things with regards to the trail specifically, but not this week. Um, I think books can also be great in terms of educating ourselves and grounding ourselves and inspiring and empowering ourselves. Um, and that's the sort of the next thing I want to talk about. But before we get on to that, I just want to talk about thinking outside of the box. So when it comes to this year, again, we can be we can be very tempted to follow our traditional ways like, well, this is what I do every year. You know, <clears throat> I want to make this happen. Um, blah, 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 blah. Like if that can't happen, there's ways around things. And often we can't see things for the wood through the trees. That's it. Right. <laughs> um, because we're just so used to seeing things through our lens and our perspective. And that's where having people around us is so helpful. But also some people inherently have that um adaptability that cunning built into them and i i just tried it with anna it was quite fun actually so there's a little um a little <clears throat> challenge thing that that you can do here so i just want you to close your eyes a minute and just just imagine for me okay um so i'm, I'm just reading the feed at the same time so probably shouldn't be doing that but i can see jpm is going and jpm had a low number so thanks for being here jpm all right, so closing our eyes, let's go to imagination land. So you have been told you also, if you know the answer, please don't say people, you have to um, pin a candle to the wall. You were given a candle, just like, a, you know, a candle like that with a wick on the end. I know your eyes are shut, so that's no good, is it? You're given a, a hammer and you're giving a box with some um, some pins in. So the pins are like, you know, the ones you stick on cork boards, just little pins like that. They're not particularly stable, but they do the job when you use them properly. So how are you going to get the candle pin to the wall? So just have a little think about that, just, just in your head. And meanwhile, I'm going to drink some water. <whistles> Cue music. Oh, it dribbled. Also, oh, just whilst you're thinking, uh, if you would like to enjoy our featured guest for the week, um, the hand is here to have a really quick conversation. Hello, hand. Hi. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yes. Are you feeling a bit warmer? Slowly, actually. I hope I can add to the. If warm. you if you push the mug out that way, it looks massive compared to my face. Yeah, it's the almost mug. as big as. Mug. <laughs> yeah. Now your life is deeper than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hand. It's always a pleasure to see you. You know, I enjoy these Wednesday chats. Yeah. Yeah. It's Wednesday good. wanders <laughs> in the winter wonderland. <laughs> You have different colored nails this week, I see. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I thought, uh, you know what, spring and all that. Let's get, let's get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I'm so tempted to make jokes, but I really just need to behave. Um, well, hand, thank you. Take care, and uh, 
Au revoir. High five. Okay. Wir sehen. <lacht> Adios. Ciao. All right, so. <lacht> the hand made a feature. And now we're going to go back to the question. So, we were talking about you need to pin a candle to the wall. You've got a candle, you've got a hammer, you've got some pins in a box. So, you probably, I mean, I'm completely going to assume if you got this, then congrats. You would definitely have a lot of adaptability, cunning, and creative thinking. So, <clears throat> most people, very common answer is, you know, They go, hmm, how can I, like, they get the pins and they even pin them underneath the, the candle and then um, it sort of sits on top roughly. Uh, some people exactly say melt it. Um, that kind of works. People say that, you'd be surprised. Some people find, you know, they even lie the hammer up the wall um, and then just put the candle on top, like, kind of works. But what people miss is something I said that was there that you didn't see. So obviously this is normally a visual diagram. If you're visual like me, then this works really well. If it doesn't, then apologies. But I, I feel like I don't want to tell you. I want to be like, leave you guessing till next week. <laughs> um, so you've got the candle, you've got the hammer, you've got the pins. What's the other thing you've got? The box. You can ask questions. So the box is just, it's just a box. It's made of cardboard, but it's strong enough to hold the pins. So you take the pins out of the box, you put the box against the wall, you pin the box on the wall, you sit the candle in the box. So that is the outside of the box thinking. It's that creative thinking. And some people inherently have that. We can actually train that. We can build that. We can cultivate that by looking at something and going, what else could I do with that? And I remember when I was being trained as a fitness instructor way back in, I think, 20... 16, I was a wee last then, um, talk about negative self-confidence. Um, my my boss, when we just had very few people here, and he take me into the um, the like main training room bit and uh, he'd get out an instrument. So like, a, I don't know, a sandbag or a medicine ball or a, a dumbbell disc. And he'd be like, I want to know 50 or 100 if he was really not liking me. Different exercises you can do at this. And I loved it because it was like literally, sometimes it was just a little tweak and it and it, it and it coats. Um well, coats, because I saw crates, it counts. <laughs> um but it's that thinking outside the box. It's like, okay, these are the foundational things that you can do with something. Now, what else can I do with it? And that's sort of what we can do with our lives. So what have we done so far in terms of what patterns and, and tendencies do we have? Um, and then, then it's like, okay, well, zooming out, like what else can we do to, to feel fulfilled with this year? And that's where, you know, we can do that with ourselves, but it takes time. It takes thought. It takes intentional space. And we can do that with other people because other people come with different lenses and perspectives. Anna and I, we've just filmed the, the latest Abby and Anna show today. Um, that's, that's going to be edited and out for Patreons on Sunday. And um, we were talking a little bit, or we're still working out sort of how to film together because I'm a director, I shoot films, you know, I'm really trying to earn that term director because essentially that's what I'm doing, whether I'm on my own or not, I'm directing and shooting a film, I'm telling a story and um, having somebody else come in, they first of all need to be humble enough to hear me in what I'm trying to instruct. I need to be confident enough in order to instruct and guide and open the door to creativity. And there needs to be a point in it all because I'm very able to do this myself. But what Anna brings is something I can't do. And that's a lens on me. So filming me and us together in a way that I can't do because she's her. And she sees things different from me simply because she's Anna. <laughs> and, you know, I love, I, I notice the little things a lot. I don't spend much time looking down, if I'm really honest. Um, I look up. And um, I love looking up, <laughs> but I do see the little things because I'm, I'm just very tuned into nature. But what I often don't do is give myself permission to stop, to kneel down and to film things because of my back um, and auntie. Yeah, <laughs> because, you know, it's painful for me to be bending over. I have to keep my back almost as rigid as possible. But Anna can do that. She's fit and able and healthy. <laughs> Unlike me, I'm an old soul. <laughs> and, you know, she'll <laughs> she shouted, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> um and she you know she will film the forget-me-nots the mushrooms that i was about to say shrooms then because that's what we call them um you know the the leaves with water droplets on them you know she'll get those foot shots of us walking past rather than full body shots she'll climb a tree although i like climbing trees too and put a camera in it and film down and it's just also capturing me because People are asking to hear more about what it's like being me and running wild. And I can do that just like I can capture Anna in a way that she can't capture her. So that is where 
other people <laughs> bring in other perspective. It's just a little example of that. So I just really want to encourage you, if you're struggling looking forward into this year, just take that candle example and think, what can I do with that? How can I translate that into my life? And there will be ways. It's just not going to be easy to see. <laughs> so the next thing is sort of looking at the fundamentals. And I think if you are struggling now, like right now, and I think there were a lot of low numbers up at the beginning, um, that it's time to come back to the fundamentals. And these have been harked on about a lot. But the thing for me is, you know, I always think if I was in government, <laughs> I know it's not that simple. But the hardest thing for me that I've heard about or taken in, and I have to re be completely honest, I don't watch the news um, because of various reasons. We'll come to all of that. Is is not how COVID has been dealt with, but it's that investment in the future through looking at people's mental health, people's finances, through people's connections. Like we have stripped people of the foundational things we need to be sane. That is connection, physical touch, communication. It's access to um, inspirational places in the outdoors. It's yada, yada, yada. I think we all know the things that we're, we're lacking right now. I don't need to lay those out. Um, and it's, it's, what we haven't been told is what we can do with this time to actually come out of this time stronger and better and fitter and healthier mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, connectionally. And we can. It sounds impossible because we're so run down and broken right now. And this is the point. If this had been rolled out in a really effective, compassionate way, we would all be so much stronger, not just as individuals, but as societies. We would not be as divided as we are now. We would be closer, more connected and therefore stronger in terms of supporting ourselves and future generations. And on that note, I'm going to take a cup of tea or a sip of tea. Where is Bobby, someone's asking, um, although it's spelled wrong. <laughs> he is uh, behind you, cuddled up in a blanket. All day today, you've been able to see our breath. It's been so cold. Um, just this house, <laughs> the joy of old houses. They are a romantic idea, but um, nah, they're good. Also, when it's colder, you're like burning more calories, right? So yeah. <laughs> It's just basically I'm training 24 hours a day. <laughs> um, so I want to come back to those foundations. It's taking control. What can we do to feel in control? What can we do to actually feel good? And I think at the beginning, I remember last March when this first lockdown thing hit, you know, everybody was like, oh, use this time. Let's, you know, you can study something new, learn a new language. You can do finish that course you started all those years ago you can read all the books you want to read you can get fit and strong and blur I'm not doing that because also how many of those people are still putting that stuff out there like I don't think that many of them are and that's the point it's we need to take small steps how do you get through a trail one step at a time and life is just like the trail I really think I should change that to the slogan of wild spend more time in the wild um life on the trail I don't know, whatever, I work on that. <laughs> That's behind the scenes, Patreons only. <laughs> um, but it's the small steps that will sustain us, that will keep us going and um, that will will last longer and help us feel better. If we're feeling better instantly, that's good, but it's not necessarily a sign that it's something we can maintain because that sort of dopamine, serotonin boost is, is gonna lessen over time. It's like, I don't know, anything, anything you do, and you need more of it over time because your brain is conditioned to that level of a, of a hormonal boost. Um, that's just the way it is if we look at humans biologically. And that's why it's, it's these small steps, just drip feeding them in that is going to be much easier. So first of all, I just want to challenge you. So we've got our one to 10 scale, 10 being, um, yep, absolutely on top of it. It's as good as it can be. One being like, this is a disaster. I'm going to run some things by you. And I just want you to you can write it down on paper, on your phone, whatever, like one to 10, where are you at within these different subjects? So first is sleep. How is your sleep? How is your quality of sleep and your sleep hygiene? Just one to 10. And also I'm going to use every single opportunity to take a sip of tea. Okay, food. Oh yeah, you can put it on the side. That's, that's a good idea. Um, just put like question one equals the number. That'd be quite cool. Number two, food. How is your nutrition? Do you feel like you're you're emotionally eating or you're um, eating sort of for your physically self? You're, you're, you're fueling yourself with good quality food. One to 10. One being really not good. Two being, no, 10 being, <laughs> this is so hard seeing the numbers. 10 being on top of that. 
So nutrition, basically. Three, hydration. Would you say you're drinking enough and keeping yourself hydrated every day? Kind of tricky. We're struggling with it because it's freezing cold and you just don't want to drink the water. So tea is great, but I'm talking about water, like one to 10, where are we at? Um, Again, one being really struggling, 10 being absolutely on top of that. Um, Play. How much play do you get into your day? How much play do you get into your day? Um, How much are you laughing? How fun, how much fun are you having? One to ten. Really interested to see the numbers on that. Actually, just going to take take a sip of tea. Also, now the, the live feed thing is going mad. Um, okay, next number five. So that was four. Play. How much play are you getting in? Um, feeling happy, jovial, whatever, messing around. Um, number five. How inspired are you feeling every single day? So inspirational sources feeding in that are motivating you, they're empowering you. Maybe it is watching a video from Wild. Maybe it's talking to somebody. Maybe it's listening to a podcast. How much inspiration are you getting? One to 10. Cool. That's number five. Just a few more to go. Number six. How do you feel your connection is with people? So obviously physical is not quite as easy at the moment and that that might drop you down. That's fine. But one to ten, how are your connections? How are your quality connections with pe- people in your life, no matter where they are in the world? One, connections are struggling, struggling to maintain those. Oh, flipping whatever this is. <laughs> Number ten, on top of that, feeling good. You know, yeah, I'm not spending as much time with people as I would like right now, but I'm still I'm, I'm cultivating these connections all going well. And then number seven is how is your movement every day? Are you moving as much as you want to? Are you moving in a way that's sort of helping you to maintain where you want to be mentally and physically, um, spiritually, whatever? And uh, and that's that. So we had, first of all, sleep. Secondly, food, nutrition. Third, hydration. Oh, actually, there's one I missed. Fourth was play. Fifth was how inspired are you feeling? Six was connection. Seven was movement. And number eight, which I just missed, is rest. So rest is sleep different from sleep. How much rest are you getting? Rest, sleep is obviously sort of sorting out that gray matter inside of our mind. It's, 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 It's physiologically, biologically sorting out everything in our heads. But rest, you don't have to be asleep to rest. How is your rest? One to 10. And that is number eight. So I can see the numbers are absolutely all over the place. And what would be really cool is for you guys to do is to sort of have those numbers accessible to you and the lower ones in particular. Be like, why? Why is this? Um, you know, perhaps your rest and sleep are low, for example, because you don't get any time for yourself and because you can't go to bed when you're tired, because you have kids running around the house half naked, food everywhere, dogs barking. Oh, no, wait, dogs pooped in the corner <laughs> and I have to get the homework done for tomorrow morning. Like that is real life for a lot of people. And that's OK. Um, it's being able to identify why. If there is a why where you're like, well, why? Why am I not feeling inspired? OK. Maybe I'm struggling with low mood and low self-esteem because flipping lockdown. (laughs) Um, Maybe I'm not feeling inspired because I'm not able to see and physically touch the people who matter to me. Um, You know, touch doesn't have to be intimate. Touch is something very important to human beings. Maybe I'm not feeling inspired because I'm flipping tired or I'm hungry because I'm not getting hungry in terms of not just physically hungry, but nutritionally hungry because I'm not getting good food in me. Um, Maybe I'm, I'm not inspired because I haven't moved. You know, I haven't got that default mode network activated in my brain. So maybe that's why you're you're not feeling inspired. So it's it's sort of being able to break these things apart and looking at all these different eight sections. And there's many more I could have gone on, but I wanted to narrow it down to eight that were very easily um, digestible. See? And my hope is that in the next week, um, what I want to do with these live sessions is every week sort of set a challenge and... Um, challenge whatever and it's completely up to you i'm not here you know to <laughs> to do anything for you except lay out a platform and be like well here's some ideas what do you want to do with them and i'm figuring everything out along the way as well so i i <laughs> can see a few people chatting about some things so i so we've got those eight things um and yeah so for you guys to be able to take them away this week and so sort of work on them to have a conversation with yourself and be like, what can I do with these? Um, So we'll come back to that. Those are the eight things. That's our sort of weekly challenge. So the next thing I think a lot of people are feeling when it comes to lockdown is fear. People are feeling afraid. Now, some of you guys might have read the book, Face the Fear and Feel It Anyway, um, or Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Actually, I always get it wrong. (laughs) Uh, It's a good book. 
I enjoyed reading it. It's got some things that, you know, any of these books, you have to take away what you want to take away and, and adapt it and apply it to your own life. Um, can definitely recommend that sort of as an audible book. It's definitely a nice audible book. Um, you can have tea. It's nice to see how many of you guys are checking in with each other. Um, that's good. So <clears throat> fear. The first thing we can do with our fear this for this year, the fear of this year, is to is to identify it. And again, but there is nothing better <laughs> um, than sitting down with a piece of paper and writing things out. If we have someone with us with which we can talk things out, that's even better. Um, but labeling things and putting words to things makes them a lot less scary. Um, ugh, heat. So naming our fears. I can say I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid to book things and get on the trail because I'm concerned it's going to be really busy. It's going to be jammed. You know, I'm I'm just, I, that's not why I hike, man. <laughs> you know, um, I'm afraid that I'm going to see a lot of degradation of, of, of the environments through which I'm walking through because people are dropping chat, tr trash. Um, yeah, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of actually, you know what, I don't have a flipping clue how fit and strong I am right now because I'm, I'm not really able to <laughs> to measure that against anything. I'm afraid of my back. I'm afraid of my back injury, which right now, one to 10, where are we at? Probably about seven on terms of the pain scale. I mean, it's been just my back ago and I've had it every week. How am I gonna backpack with that? I don't know. Um, I'm fearful because actually I have a lot of plans and ideas, but my partner doesn't because they've lost their job and you know they've got their kids to look after or whatever it is. And I don't wanna leave them. You know, it's it's there's a lot of uncertainties when we're in a partnership for this year, because actually it's become a little bit of a free for all. I've got to look after myself. You know, I for me, for example, again, Anna and I were talking about it. Anna has her ways of sort of handling her emotional turmoil or whatever you want to call it. And for me, I process by pushing myself physically and getting out on the trail. Can't do that, but I'm still pushing myself physically. So. It's being able to label that fear that actually is is a really another really good way to empower ourselves when it comes into 2021. Um, and, you know, it, it's another way to empower ourselves with that fear is, OK, I'm feeling afraid of this. But then <clears throat> next to it is writing a what if list. So <clears throat> you can have columns here. So you've got top fear. What if you go down, list the fears and the next to it, what if. So the what if is basically saying, what if I listen to this fear? So what's what's going to happen if you listen to this fear? Well, I'm not going to get out. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to see that. Like, whatever. What's the worst that can happen if you do face the fear? OK, maybe the trail is busy and it's not quite the harmonious experience I wanted. Um, maybe um, maybe Anna's going to be somewhere and I'm going to be somewhere and we're going to be apart for a little bit because <laughs> she has her things she needs to do this year. And I have my things for the business, you know, maybe whatever it is. So it's having your fear, your what if list, if you listen to it and what's the worst that can happen and being able to actually break that apart in a visible, tangible thing. And this can take a long time to do again, really empowering. And when you've got that worst that can happen, if you go, huh, you know what, that's not actually that bad. Um, then you can basically crack on with it. <laughs> you know, you've got your plan or you've got your goal. Now form a plan and execute it. If you go, okay, that that worst can happen is I really don't like that, but I'm I'm just not ready to give up on this. You know, I want to get out. Um, um, it's it's sorry, I'm just looking at the feed there. Um, Drink less caffeine, Abby. Actually, I don't drink caffeine after 11 a.m. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, ah, great. Those things always make me lose my trailer for and I can see there's a very important conversation going on, but I'm going to let that just carry on. Um, yeah, so if you find that the, the, the fear you've got and the worst that can happen still makes you want to go and do it, then, you know, it's, it, but you can't do that yourself. Like, this is where it's like, don't be afraid to reach out. And I think, you know, I have been on a massive journey also, how cool is that? Can we just do that again? <laughs> Ready? It's like, I've been on a massive journey. Whoosh! Wild! <laughs> oh, man, maybe you need to make, like, a promotional video. Um, I've been on a massive journey, especially since meeting Anna, but also a few friends before Anna, you know, who've really taught me the importance of um, um, connection and that, that actually friend power is more important than willpower you know a lot of people want to start businesses or they have these ideas and they're like I just need more confidence and I need more time and I need x usually what we actually need is more people around us who can build us up and help us see the way forwards 
Um, and we lack that a lot. I, I can't remember the exact percentage, but so many of us feel lonely and loneliness is on the rise. It's chronic and within our society. Oh, <coughs> you know that thing where you like have a tickly breath? That is, that is me right now. Um, <coughs> and loneliness is real. And, you know, I think people are feeling more lonely than ever right now because obviously we can't see people and we haven't got that day-to-day -day interaction like with the cafe person and with the person on the street who's walking too slowly or their dog wheeze near you or whatever you're like oh never mind um certainly if you're british anyway <laughs> and <clears throat> that's that's okay it's okay to own that but actually there has been obviously a rise of online interactions and that's great um but are they quality interactions and this is what's really important is to look at your connections and your interactions and think are they quality are they feeding into those eight things <coughs> um and helping us to stay on track with those eight things so that you are bettering yourself. And this is where like the Patreon community comes in for me. I set up Patreon in January 2020 with the goal of um, offering sp a safe space for people to come build meaningful, lasting connections with people all around the world. And it has been so fruitful and so successful. And I love it. I have made friends out of it. <laughs> um, these people help steer me with wild. They are just great amazing people um i don't big it up because i have to i big it up because i want to and the truth is i'm not even bigging it up i don't have the words to <laughs> tell you how good it is just try it um <clears throat> and it's tricky because i mean somebody there is just saying that you know online connection is hard work but it's only hard work if it's with people who aren't sharing the load um and obviously yes a lot of us need need space and online especially for working online it's flipping stressful like I'm the same I'm struggling to message people back but I know that these are safe spaces I can get back to them when I get back to them um <coughs> so that's great I'm really struggling with my throat right now hmm. always feels like something comes up with these live sessions <laughs> so yeah, we've looked at that. And, and and this is where it's like looking at the people in your life and thinking, how good are these connections? And actually, this isn't just the if they don't sort of fix it, ditch it kind of situation. Um, it's really, really important to look at people who matter to you. And if if you just feel like that relationship isn't quite where it can be, is identify what what can you do to show up? How can you serve? How can you have that conversation so that you guys can show up for each other and serve for each other? Um, and that's obviously very personal and I'm not going to go into that. But <clears throat> this is where there is so much power in little actions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they can make a massive difference. And right now, especially, um, you know, random acts of kindness kind of thing going down that route, again, can help make us feel really good. Um, and yeah, good about ourselves, essentially. And often it has a bit of a selfish background, but it also doesn't because you're spreading the love, you know, and, and generosity and actually looking outside of ourselves is something that is not happening much in our society. Um, we're all caught up in our own heads. We're all caught up in our own lives. And I feel like that's what's happening with this year. Well, this year I'm going to do this, that and the other. And the truth is that actually, cool, but what about the people that matter to you? Like, Maybe you're struggling with lockdown, but other people in your life might be struggling too. How can you show up for them? Can you sit down with them, even if it's just on FaceTime or whatever? Never use FaceTime, so I can't tell you about that. <laughs> um, and just like with a cup of coffee and be like, so what are the fears for you? What are you scared of? Or what can you do? Um, I have one friend in particular who just constantly reminds me, no matter what I do this year, like it's okay. Um, and that... I will be able to achieve anything I've set my mind on because I'll break it down and I'll talk to people. And also just because I don't achieve it next year, doesn't mean I'm not going to achieve it. And all sorts of different things, you know, we all need different input in different ways. And these relationships are worth more in my opinion than what we do. <laughs> um, surrounding ourselves by that unconditional love is really, really hard to find. And if you don't have that right now, I want to say that you can, and I want to say that it will happen. And I want to say, don't be afraid to continue to be open, no matter how much you've been hurt. That is authentic. That is real. That is genuine. And there's not enough of that in the world because we're in a hurting world and most people are suffering and hollowed or stuck inside of themselves. If you can get yourself out, it's terrifying. It can feel lonely, but it's so worth it. And it's like a smile. You know, they say, if you smile at somebody, then they're going to smile at however many people on the same day. 
it makes a difference. Every interaction you have with somebody makes a difference. You have the power in your words and your actions. And not only showing up for ourselves is important, but showing up for others. And that can also help us on our journey as well. Drink the tea. And this is just why I find it funny that so many people are like, well, why are you harking on about mental health all the time? This is a hiking channel. It's like, first of all, don't tell me what to do with my channel. But secondly, because I'm showing up, because I recognize I'm not the only one <laughs> striving right now and struggling right now and feeling like I'm drowning intermittently right now because most people are feeling that. So why am I not going to show up for my community and for the people who follow Wild? Like I have a duty to do that. I have a responsibility to do that. And I have a want to do that. Why? Because I care about you. I don't know who you are. That's the honest truth. I don't know who GD is, who Smurf is. Um, I don't know who anybody is, <laughs> uh, but you're here and that matters to me. And that's, it's the give and it's the take. And this is what we can, we can do in our life. So you might not be a public figure, <laughs> but how can you give and serve in your community, in your network? And also it's living by example. This is the other thing It's like, <clears throat> again, Anna and I, I can just use this as an example. We are learning to bring two lives together and we are trying to model what we want that to look like in each other. And <laughs> sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. But living by example um, is, is, is something that's hard. <laughs> Again, it can feel like a long, lonely road, but it's, it's another way to really empower people. If we want to get a message across that actually we can come out of COVID feeling stronger and more confident and more connected with people, then I have to model that. And I have to prove that that's possible. And I 120,000% believe that is possible because I'm on that road and I'm extending my hand to you guys to join me. And again, Patreon is one way to do that. I'm not just selling it as a sales pitch. I'm selling it because people's lives are changing. And just by being here watching these videos, I know that people's lives are changing. Um, these sessions are hard for me. I've said that every week. Um, <coughs> You know, usually, ah, stupid throat. <laughs> I'm on a live session and I'm coughing. Some people would not be comfortable with that. How many of you guys are cool with public speaking? You know, this feels a little bit like that, but with much less prep. <laughs> and I might not have all the people sat in front of me, but I can see that, you know, there was 150, 60 odd people here earlier. And I know that, you know, three, four, 5,000 people watch this thing. Like I'm out there. <laughs> and the same with every video. And I don't give a crap about whether it's as big as some people's live sessions. That is not the point here. But the point is it's difficult for me. You know, I've had quite a few tears today. It's been a tough day. <laughs> it's been a good day, but a tough day. And they can go hand in hand completely hard and good all at the same time, um, <coughs> especially when there's there's gratitude in there. But, you know, it, it I'm still coming on to these sessions and pretty much every week I'm like, <sighs> great live session. But when I'm on it, as everybody who I say that to knows, and I know very well, that um, it's 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 good, it's important, and, and if there's a purpose to it, it's not meaningless. I can see someone saying, do you answer questions? I just ask when you ask questions, do it in capital letters, and then I can see it, which is helpful. So, yeah, it is a crazy feeling to know that people are watching you and you have no control over it, but <clears throat> there we go. What do we have control over when it comes to other people? Um, I'm just actually reading the comments now, which I feel is kind of important. <laughs> so, okay, let's have a little wee roundup because I think we've touched on a lot of stuff. And then I'm going to just leave you with a couple of books. I have no affiliation with these people. I wish I did. I could put that out there completely honestly. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, next week, we're going to bring out some guidebooks. I want to just say if um, if you are a bit anxious about the trail and stuff, the next week might be a little bit hard. But again, I'm going to try and approach it in a very sensitive way. Um, so... Uh, yeah, but that's next week. Anyway, so we have talked about basically, first of all, I told you a little bit about my story and my perspective um, <clears throat> and sort of how, you know, it's been really tricky for me being in the public eye, feeling like my every move is scrutinized. I mean, I'm no celebrity, people. Look at me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's been it's been it's been challenging. And I feel like I've definitely made the best of the situation from from conversations with myself inside and conversations with people outside of me. Um, I know that people have been having those connections around me has been very empowering, restorative. So, yay, that's great. I told you a little bit about my story. Um, then we talked about uh, basically being able to look at our year and to think, what are we afraid of? 
What are those barriers? So we've got our fears to write those down and identify them. <coughs> um, what if we listen to those fears? What's the worst that can happen? And then basically with the worst that can happen, what can we do with that? Like the worst that can happen is the trail is busy if I ignore the fear. Um, or if the worst that can happen is big, but you still want to face the fear, it's how can you do that? So it's taking those steps to empower yourself. Um, it's then, so we've talked about identifying fears as well. We looked at the fundamentals, eight different fundamentals. So you scored yourself one to 10. Where are you on <coughs> the fundamental scales? So we've got sleep. We have nutrition and food. We have hydration. We have rest. We have play. We have feeling inspired. We have quality connections and we have movement. So those eight things. Drink the tea. My goal on one of these live sessions is to actually get through the tea. It's uh, not happening. <laughs> mm. Great. <coughs> Um, somebody's obsessed with their beer. I have to say, I don't drink, so enjoy. <laughs> um, we talked about hiking your own hike. If you're feeling that pressure to sort of join the race, to plan everything and meticulously get your year sorted, it's about actually what's the worst that can happen if you don't do that this year <laughs> and you you take um, you take a step back and just go, okay, I've learned to see the beauty in my local area. I'm going to spend another year doing that. I'm going to spend some time with good people um and focus on those fundamentals so that maybe by 2022 i'm going to be in a much better place physically and mentally you know um and it doesn't all have to happen like now <laughs> so those are some of the things that we've touched on and a lot more as well and there's a few things i want to just leave you with a couple of books so first of all if you're interested in different recipes um there's so many different books out there. I like Jamie Oliver's stuff because they're so simple like with five different ingredients or five minutes or whatever but this one's fun um, just because it's got a lot about nutrition in there, which is The Doctor's Kitchen. Um, so Rupi Orjula, uh, he's got a good podcast as well. And I have to say, I love books. I like getting off the internet, but also podcasts are great. If you're not a listener of podcasts, first of all, subscribe to mine. Um, secondly, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, listening to podcasts is just something so good to do. If you are feeling stressed and overwhelmed, just giving yourself 10 minutes. Like everyone's like, do the meditation. I actually find... <coughs> 10 minutes of just listening to a podcast is so good because, again, it takes you out of yourself. As somebody who struggles with really quite extreme anxiety at times and certainly very long-lasting chronic anxiety, um, sometimes breathing techniques are not the answer because they put you right back into a panic state because you're doing the breathing that you'd be trying to do to not be panicked. <laughs> and it's a vicious cycle, especially when you've been going on for years and years. So listening to something is another really great way to, to calm yourself down and also to learn as well. Mm. okay <laughs> the next book i want to show you is this one so you guys might have heard them is dr wrong and chatterjee so this is the four pillar plan so he talks again about relaxing eating moving and sleeping so there's loads of different empowering things he has a number of books he's got like stress solution here i was going to show you that and then i wasn't and now i am um and he's got a new one out lose weight feel great which is very controversial but it's got everything in here so you can see in here and i use this with my clients when i'm doing pt stuff all the different colors you can eat um, so with all the different polyphenols, which essentially antioxidants, they're in every everything and sort of focusing on getting that good quality nutrition. Um, there you go, some nice visuals as well. Uh, there we go. So yeah, all sorts of different things um, about getting outside. He's got some home stuff as well. As I say, I'm not here to sell the books, but I'm just trying to give you some tools if you want to, to do anything. Also, can I just do something right now because um, there we go. I'm just hiding somebody because it's just really winding me up now. Um, and then the final thing I want to say is if you need a gift, um, for yourself, then this is definitely one of the favorite books of all time. <laughs> so this is obviously Charlie Mackesy. Most of you guys will know him. Um, it's so funny because my friend, sort of like my second mum and I, we followed him way before, he was famous and uh, because he's, he's you know, he's done a lot of talks in churches and things. So he's got that faith based background um, and he's an artist, obviously. So he has this beautiful, beautiful book, which I think everybody should have. Um, it should be mandatory for the human race to have this. Um, and it's just basically it is a story, but you can open it at any page and read it. So, for example, <coughs> when have you been at your strongest? Asked the boy when I have dared to show my weakness. Asking for help isn't giving up, said the horse. It's refusing to give up. And it's just things like that. Like sometimes, said the horse, sometimes what? Asked the boy. Sometimes just getting up and carrying on is brave and magnificent. 
and then it's things it's just and it's, it's so perfectly imperfect so this is called the boy the mole the fox and the horse and uh yeah if there's a book you need right now it's this <laughs> it'll make you cry if you can't cry i'm not a, not a crier but this makes me cry um so yeah those are my three little takeaways and with that guys we are gonna wrap this thing up so i want to say thank you for being here i want to say those are some things you can treat yourself to there's lots of things to get stuck into um, <clears throat> and I love to, um, yeah, hear your feedback. Now, one thing I want to do with these live sessions is basically share the copy link. Oops, Daisy, I'm opening Final Cut Pro. My laptop thinks I'm doing some work. Um, is this? So the link I've just shared is the link to the next live session. Now, <clears throat> obviously, please respect that space. But I want to just say I would love if you guys want to have a bit of a discussion about how you're getting on with your eight fundamentals, um, looking at those lower numbers and building yourself up, then please use that space. You're absolutely welcome to. So I'm, I'm creating a community space right there. <laughs> um, the next thing is obviously, please, 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 if you enjoy these live sessions and you would like to support me and Wild and everything that we're doing and you'd like to join that community, it's completely mutually beneficial. In fact, definitely more beneficial for you guys to join Patreon, then please consider doing that. In fact, don't just consider it. Just do it. Just give it a go. It costs three, as little as three pounds a month to just try it. Um, if you join for five pound a month, then you get <laughs> obviously the whole community access. Um, you get access to podcasts. You can have one-to-one -one sessions with me. A lot of people have those now. Um, you get giveaways. There's live sessions just like this. There's so much more. Um, I'm not selling it <laughs> because I can sell it. I'm selling it because I'm passionate about it. I'm a YouTuber, but I'm not just a YouTuber. I really love you guys, and I love spending this time with you. So, <clears throat> yeah, please consider that. Um, somebody's asking about a podcast and so my podcast is the one wildlife podcast and then it's a separate podcast um that that goes on to patreon as well um and yeah that's about it i think so have fun with your homework <laughs> and uh yeah i'll hang on do you know what just before we sign off i will send you one last thing which is this oh, hang on. here we go so if you're interested in joining Patreon, because I can make this easier for you, there's the link. So just click that. Super easy. Create an account. Share it. I'll message you straight away, pretty much. And um, yeah, that'd be really good. And Dave is still not here. Come on. <laughs> what is this? I'm going to give him a message now. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, Dave has had a bad back. So maybe next week we just have to I don't know, send Dave a mutual cake or something. <laughs> cool, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Wherever you are, look after yourself. Stay safe. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to get outside and have an adventure. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Stay wild. Bye.